It's good to be back, however I'm still recovering. Hello guys, I'm bringing you a pretty good news actually. If you in the past had a Raspberry Pi 4 and bought yourself pretty awesome looking Desk Pi Pro and experienced some boot from USB problems which made you abandon the case altogether, well, it might be a good idea to take it out from your drawer, clean it up from the dust and try it again. I've done that with my Desk Pi Pro and it seems that the latest boot from USB implementation in Raspberry Pi OS fixed some of the issues. So give it a go. However, the news I'm bearing is not just for Desk Pi users. If you were considering uh, the Desk Pi Pro case, but you weren't sure whether it's worth your hassle and whether you should try and do it yourself, then I've got some good news for you as well. There is a new revision of Desk Pi Pro and they've sent me this uh, case so I could take a look and confirm that everything is working as supposed to. Since I've already reviewed the case and benchmarked some thermos in this video in here, there is no point of doing it again since the basic design of the Desk Pi Pro, the new edition, is the same. The only difference on the outside is slightly bigger form factor, and by slightly I mean 2 millimeters. And as the case looks exactly the same on the outside, I think it's a good idea to take advantage of the fact that I actually have the old revision and the new revision and compare the internals of both cases. And if you're already interested, in the description of this video you're going to find all the links to the cases itself and the kits, because they are being sold as kits itself. So let's open them up. This revision introduced a couple of extra accessories, main one being the T-shaped link, which is ground to USB ports, which prevents interference. As you can see, the whole main board has been vastly redesigned. A lot of components were moved around, which indicates major rework rather than just small iteration. There is a toggle switch now, which allows you to set the power state on the power failure, so now the power on behavior after the power loss can be defined with a button instead of pins. Another thing that's been relocated is actually the power supply to the upper deck of the board. So let's take a look at that. Apart from the new S media controller for USB drives, the board has shielding to remove the interference and help with grounding. The M2 attachment board is exactly the same like in the old one. Moving on, the infrared expansion board has a couple of resistors and new markings that indicate the position for enabling and disabling pins, and the ribbon itself connecting 40 pin header comes with the conductive mesh as well to help with USB grounding. Inside my box I also could find the previously mentioned T-shaped grounding link, microSD card with pre-installed Raspberry Pi OS and a 32GB card, and quick charge compatible power supply. Just like before, the case comes with a dedicated fan and you can install the firmware to control the power profile for the fan itself based on the core temperature. I'll link the specific of that in the article itself. The new iteration is compatible with 2.5 inch solid state drives and M.2 SATA drives. Just be mindful of the fact that it doesn't support NVMe drives, so you have to select these appropriately. I'll link a couple of positions that you can pick from in the description of this video. So is everything perfect? No. There is one of the things that I come across during assembly of my Raspberry Pi and Desk Pi Pro. The 40-pin header, it is exposed and available for ribbon cables, however, upon closer inspection I've noticed that the ribbon cable itself won't fit in. This is due to the headers being installed too low. This would be a pain to fix, I'm afraid, because you would have to resolve the entire header, and the easiest option to go around it would be to sand down the connector to make it fit. But it is not something you should be expected to do, so I'm going to submit my feedback and hope that's are going to be addressed as well. Other than that, I had no problems. I'm going to link the setup I've used for the boot from USB. If you want to follow along, that's fine. And you'll see that you will be able to use the boot from USB even if you still have the older generation Desk Pi Pro. So if your old Desk Pi Pro case is still in a drawer, take it out and give it a go. In the description of this video, you're gonna find the links to the new version of the Desk Pi Pro, which you can purchase for yourself as a separate case or as a kit. And 
If you don't really like it, I'm gonna link another case in here, which you can take a look and take advantage of also both from USB. Let me know what you think and let me know if you are one of the original buyers and what kind of problems you encounter it and I'll be happy to pass the feedback over. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching, you know what's gonna happen next, which is I'm gonna recommend a couple of my social media which you should really subscribe to keep in touch. You know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that, but yeah, definitely subscribe, etc. And since I don't have a posting schedule, but I'm way behind with my workflow for Not Enough Tech, expect a couple of nice videos coming up soon. Thanks so much for watching and take care. Bye.